so we got Bobby Fischer, um, who is at the time the, the best chess player in the world, maybe the best chess player of all time, and he's versing Ruben Fine. Ruben Fine is no slouch. He's also a very talented super grandmaster. This, this is a game you can see in the candidates or at the U.S. Open. Just two of the top players in the country going up against each other. So in this position, Fisher plays the always aggressive e4 and is met by e5. This is pretty typical, and we're going to end up in the Italian game. Crucial idea you have to watch out for is the f7 weakness. White has a very quick, fast development, and you're immediately going to have to defend f7. So a good way to do that is to go into the Guccio Piano with bishop c5, which is also an excellent move. You can see it's almost a symmetrical game, except um, the knights are different. But immediately, Fisher goes in something called the Evans Gambit. This is a weird move with b4. The whole idea here is after bishop takes, you're going to be able to hit c3. And the bishop is going to have to move back, and then you're pushing the center with d4. Pawn takes on d4, and you have to note here that you actually can't take back because of the pin on the pawn here, so you can't do that. You just have to castle, and then pawn to c3. The pawn to c3 is played, and I want you to note that Fisher has actually given up three pawns for free. Despite the fact that he's given up three pawns for free, he has massive development. Like I said, f7, black has done nothing to rectify this situation. He's done nothing to defend f7. He's just taking pawns, and Fisher has a massive tempo here. So, queen b3, it's a battering ram, bishop queen, and you're quickly going to notice that this knight will be hanging, and it could even be mate if you don't defend. Queen e7 is actually a mistake, but it looks like a good move because it's actually hanging e4. However, after you hit knight to c3, the pawn is defended. It might look solid to take the knight, queen takes, and then play... Queen takes an e4, but notice that the knight and the queen are hitting e1. So even though the rooks aren't connected, rook e1 will win the queen. So you actually can't take that way. Um, that, that whole line doesn't work. Instead, Ruben Fine decides to add another attacker to this weak e4 pawn. He's just trying to nickel and dime Fisher here. He really wants to, to win this pawn. He's going to simplify this game and pretty much make it a boring grandmaster type win. Playing this way against a grandmaster is absolutely ridiculous, by the way. You don't see this. So even though white is actually winning, he's down two pawns, and it doesn't look possible to defend e4. However, Fisher can do anything, and he does find knight to d5. And I want you to note here that if knight takes this pawn, then the knight will win the queen. So then you think, well, okay, but queen takes e4. But this line actually gets quite bad. Bishop g5. And if the knight takes back, bishop takes knight, you have a really fascinating fork. And the best move here is to play queen e6, which is crazy. Because if you play something like queen to g6, you actually get queen to e3. And even though you've given up three pawns, you still can't defend the king. And you can't really do anything. You can't move the knight in front. You can't move the queen in front. Um, this knight won't do anything. You're pretty much forced to move over. And it's quickly going to be mate or you're going to lose some substantial material. Engine's calling for queen e6, sacrificing the queen to close up the position. That's how deadly this is. So this is an incredible line that isn't as flashy, but it's still an incredible position. So in this position, he decides to instead take knight d5. He ignores the pawn. And I know a lot of people will be tempted to play bishop takes on d5 because you have control of f7 again, but it's actually much better to take with d5 because you open up the e-file. You have to move the knight, it comes with tempo. And in this position, Fisher just goes ahead and trades and queen's gonna take back. It's hitting the rook. So the best move here is just to play bishop b2 and you're threatening g7. So the queen moves over to g5. Now we're defending g7, right? But Fisher, Fisher, accounted for all of this he didn't do all of this to simply to just get crazy development he had a plan in mind right um these bishops are extremely active this pawn is really annoying to deal with and prevents a lot of developmental ideas because f7 would be hit 
And really, what you probably should have been doing here is castling, but it's too late for that. So first, h4. And the idea here is he moves the queen off of the defense of g7, and then bishop's going to be able to take now. And, you know, the best move here is actually queen e7. And you can't play rook e1 because the bishop is defending. So bishop takes, rook takes, and it's just going to be losing. But queen f3... And you're hitting a lot of different angles, right? Like the scholar's mate is available. Opponent's probably going to look to castle. Then you have to watch out for queen g4. And this is threatening maiden one. And you, you can see this is just going to become a disaster, right? Like this is just Fisher madness. And you don't really want to play against this. Okay. So anyway, queen just takes on h4. Bishop takes, rook takes. And in this position, you're probably assuming, okay, bishop moves out of the way. Um, I don't know. Uh, Fisher does have really good development. This bishop isn't that great. The rook isn't that great. But but there's not really an attack here. Rook e1. Just so you know, if bishop takes, a takes e, and it's the same exact threat. But in this position, Reuben Fine didn't even bother. As you can see, the king cannot move over to f8. He says, okay, I see where this is going. I'm going to play this out. And he does. King d8 is actually the best move. And Fisher hits something here that's absolutely spectacular. He goes queen to g3. And believe it or not, the queen is hanging and unprotected. Well, let me prove it to you. If queen takes queen, it is mate on the spot. It is mate on the spot. So you can't take the queen. Okay, but then think about that. You can't take the queen, and the queen's not defended. If you can't take the queen and it's not defended, what do you do? Well, you have to stay on this diagonal because, as I just proved, there's a mating threat here, right? So, okay, if you play queen g5, the queen takes. If you play queen f6, takes. If you play queen e7, rook takes. And this is, this is also just going to be mate, by the way, because queen e5. Okay, in this position, the best move is simply just to take the bishop. But queen h4, f6, check again. King is stuck in place. Rook e7, and then queen e7, and that is just game over. Bobby Fischer is the greatest chess player of all time, and that really proves it. I I'm here to answer questions now.